One of my favorites, Democratic Congressman Gregory Meeks of New York, Queens, New York specifically. He is the ranking member on the House Foreign Affairs Committee and a senior member of the House Financial Services Committee. Congressman, thank you so much for being here. Super excited to see you and talk to you. So yesterday, big day. Um, is it a win, a loss? How do you sort of process what we are looking at now as we are, you know, going forward, but also still averted a government shutdown? Well, look, we can't forget how we got here. Right. We got here because of a crisis in the Republican Party who wanted to cut 30 percent of the budget across the board the day before yesterday. That's what took place. Finally, Speaker McCarthy decided to do what Democrats have been asking all along, to let's have a clean CR as we continue to discuss what was going on. And basically what took place, without the, uh, with the exception of Ukraine funding, we got a clean CR, which we were asking for. So Democrats then were able to keep the government from shutting down. Now, I caution everyone because it's just a 45-day period. So the question is, will Republicans move from those drastic cuts that would devastate the American public to listening and working with Democrats so that we can come up finally with a budget that is working for all Americans? Uh, and so 45 days is not a long time. No. And so we've got to see whether or not, you know, the Republicans will move from the disastrous proposals that they have been uh, trying to push forward that led us to the brink. We would not have had been to the brink had, in fact, they done what we requested all the time and finally had to relent and do so that we would not shut this government down. So I want to open this up a little bit because there's a lot of conversation about what Matt Gates may do in response in terms of Speaker McCarthy and moving to oust him. And we know that he made all these crazy deals to even get the speakership to begin with. So he's skating on thin ice, proverbially speaking. I think one of the things that people are wondering is what happens if Matt Gates actually does that and then there is turmoil in terms of who the speaker is going to be? We are already seeing sort of a logjam in government already. Is it possible, and I'm not suggesting that members can't walk and chew gum at the same time, but you've got 45-day clock that's already ticking. You are talking about removing the speaker. It took 15 rounds for the last guy to get in, right? So where do we go from here, and what does the other side of that look like for government? Forget the parties, for government in terms of being able to function and do the job that you guys are sitting there to do. But I think it is clear that the Republicans can't govern. We've seen that for, from the time that they've been in power, from the time that they took 15 rounds. Now, I agree with Matt Gaetz in that new leadership that can be trustworthy is needed. So I would think that, and I'm ready to work with Republicans, all we need is five Republicans to vote with me to elect Hakeem Jeffries to be the Speaker of the United States Congress. You'll have new leadership that is trustworthy and will be able to deliver and get things done, just as we did as Democrats with a five-vote majority in the 117th Congress. That is the way that we can move forward. We've seen, as Hakeem has said, that he's willing to work with Republicans. And that's why we were able to avoid a shutout last night. So I think that the American public should look at this picture and see how we can progress and work together. You have one leader who is not trustworthy based upon his own membership, who's divided and they're dysfunctional. And you have another who has always kept his word, who's put, been putting things together. And all we need is five Republicans to vote with us to elect Hakeem Jeffries, and we'll work together. We won't have that dysfunction that you're seeing on the Republican side. You've been there as long as anyone else. You've got as much political cachet as anyone on the Hill, and you're as smooth as they come. I'm going to ask you straight up, do you think that you have five votes? Do you think you have three? Honestly, can you get to five in order to make that a reality? Look, all I know is this. The so-called moderates on the Republican side, they are upset with what's taking place there. They see dysfunction. Now, if they truly want to make a difference and save and work for Americans, as they say, then they should not want to continue in that kind of uh, 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 confusion and disillusionment uh, and let's get something done. They're not, you know, you said it yourself, Charles, that 
they may not have the ability to elect anyone. Anyone. So I want someone trustworthy. I want someone that is respected. I want someone that wants to work across the aisle. To me, that's Hakeem Jeffries. All right, let's switch gears for a moment. You have extensive experience with your work on foreign affairs. And one of the things that was left out of the resolution yesterday was aid for Ukraine. Uh, that's obviously a big issue for you. It's a big issue for Democrats. Uh, number one, I want to know, why is this, in the most succinct way possible, so important for you? And then number two, how do you expect those negotiations to go over the next couple of weeks as we target November 17th as another date to try and make sure that we can fund the government and everything that needs to take place? So this world is much smaller than it used to be. And we all have to work and cooperate with one another. And the threat that Putin has uh, presented to all of us by going into the sovereign property of Ukraine is a threat to our NATO allies, and it's a threat to the United States of America, it's a threat to our allies in Southeast Asia, and we've got to work collectively together. One of the things that the President Biden has done was have us work closely together. Now that we're there, which Putin thought would not happen, thought we would be divided, now that we're there, we cannot allow the Republicans to divide us now. And so we've got to make sure we continue funding Ukraine. You know, for me, a national security, right now, by funding Ukraine, and those people are fighting on their own, all we're doing is giving them the equipment, the new to do it, so we need to continue it. But if that was a NATO ally that was strong, sure. not only would we be uh, funding it with, 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 with uh, weapons, we would have to put boots on the ground. I don't want the most difficult votes that I have to make as a member of Congress is to determine whether boots go on the ground or not. I don't want to have to see that we have to go to Section 5 uh, in our NATO agreement and put boots on the ground somewhere else and we've got to send our soldiers over there where we've got the brave men and women of Ukraine fighting for their own independence and all we have to do is continue to work with them and give them what they need. And guess what? It's not not just the United States alone that's doing this. It's all of our allies that are also contributing tremendously to this. And that makes us stronger as free and independent and democratic countries. And that's on the line of whether or not our integrity as a country, can they trust us? You know, they've seen what Donald Trump did. They can't trust him. They can't trust the Republicans. What's that line is our state with reference to all of our allies that we work together, because that is tremendously important in this day and age in which we live now. And McCarthy and others on the Republican side who have said, I was in a room with Zelensky, and they said that they would give him, they told him, we will give you what you need. Now it's time for them to put up or be quiet and let Democrats take over and do what we need to do for the safety and security of our country. A lot of ground to cover between now and November 17th. I wish you the best of luck. Congressman Gregory Meeks, one of the best dressed men on the Hill and one of the favorite alphas that I have that I know. <laughs>